Hey, this is Delbert. We are making a video for host hosting in the old tools <laughs> for the new format. I hope that made sense. Anyway, this is where we are. Here are the hosting tools. What I want to do in this video is not only explain the hosting tools, but I also want to give us some tips as to how we can better minister to people through it and understand things that are going on that they're facing. So we'll start over here on the right in the hosting tools. If we click on the gear, which are the settings, then it says available for live prayer. That should be white. If it's red, that means it's off and you are not available to help people in prayer. If available for live help. If that's off and off is red with the white circle inside of it, if that's off, then you're not able to help anyone. If you are here, if you click this, disable uh, chat for all users, you'll see what happens to the chat area here. It will turn gray like this and no one, you or no one else will be able to have chat. So we want that enabled as well. That should look exactly like that. Click that. Going over to the I, the letter I, if we click that, these are the volunteer notes. What this is, is full of helps for the host. You can copy and welcome people. I have several welcomes in here for you. And this is pasted into the chat. Entered. And then we will see, see the welcome. Going back, I want you to see all that's in here. I have several or a couple usually on each each subject. For example, here is the connection card. And uh, you can tell people how to do the connection card. And this is a long paste. And I want to talk about that. Let me scroll down to one that I can do what I want to talk about. For example, the prayer wall is a long paste. If we copy and paste all of this in, And then take a look at it. Whoops, wrong. I got to get into here. There we go. All right, that's a long paste. People don't like reading long posts or long paste. So it's far better. And then also sometimes it'll just get hung up down here and won't even scroll up. If we will take that and maybe cut it in half, I find a good place to break it. You could break it here at this sentence or break it here at this sentence. Let's break this one down here. I'm going to copy that, paste that in. And, uh, and you will see how much smaller that is. And people will probably read that easily. And then get the rest of it in the next paste. And then we'll paste that in. And now we see we only have two pastes instead of one. And people will read these much quicker, much easier, and it won't blog up. It won't stop the scrolling from happening here. So that's the interesting part here on this. And you need to be familiar with what all is in here when you're hosting. Now at the bottom in this area, very bottom, I have my information that you can contact me on technical issues, not you, but anyone can. Here is my information. Above that is information about each campus. For Panama City Beach campus, there are the service times that they have. There's the location at the beach. And right now, of course, Mo, uh, Panama City campus is, of course, meeting at Mosley. And that will be updated when I uh, when they change their their meeting location. One more thing I want to show you while I'm here is people will sometimes question about what denomination is North Star. Well, you can go right here and you can see that North Star is a non-denominational church. We are associated with ARC or ARC, and here is the. Here is the link to go to ARC's website if people have a question about what ARC is. 
and here's some more information. So I wanted you to see that as well. So here are the, the paste-ins for the host. I use those every week. Nearly every host does, so need to be familiar with those. Here are the slides. Now right here, now the slides are off, and that is because the last time that this was used, we turned them off, and, and that's how the very next service will begin is however they are left. So we want those on. Now when that's on, it's white. If it's white, what I say by on is if you come down to in here, you'll see that this is about to change. That's the North Star logo. It's a, right now, this is the live one right here. Now you see it changed because the time ran to it. This one will change in 55 seconds. It will, this one will be live. So that's important to understand and to know how this operates. Now, looking at these, I want to make sure we understand something. Sometimes the speaker will be talking about something. Say, for example, they, would, uh, they say something about kids. I can publish kids right now, and it's going to be live. This is what everyone will see. Now, say this one here. I want to publish it, but I don't know what it's saying. I don't know how what it looks like. So I can click the slide itself. I can see it, but now I'm going to go to another spot, uh, to another browser that I have opened up just as a guest. And you see they're still looking at kids. Going back, they're still looking at kids while we're looking here at this one. Uh, so so I, I want you to see how how this works. If you want to see what it says all alone by yourself, you just click the link, click the, uh, the, the slide itself, and it will not be published. Uh, let's find another one. This one's going to be six, six, this kid's is going to be six minutes from changing. I want to see what it says. So I can open that up and look at it. And the, what is live right now? Let's see right here is this one is live. So if I go back over to the guest, they're looking at something totally different. So if you want uh, what you're posting to go live, you must click publish. So if I want this to now go live, I've, I must push publish. Now publish will be live on publish. All right. Publish will be live here on the guest. So what I'm wanting you to see is, is that if you want it live, you must push publish. If you just want to see what it says, you and you alone push the slide, press the slide itself. You can read it and the guest will still be seeing whatever is published and live. Hope I made, uh, made that clear. Now, another thing is, is that these are set on, on time. I can turn off the time. Now, the time when I do this is usually when the speaker begins to speak. What I will do is usually I will go to the top. I will turn off automatic slide push. The red square comes up with a white circle in it. That means it's off. Now, what you'll notice it are none of these now have the time running. That means that it's it stopped. What I do when the speaker is speaking, I usually push out the North Star logo. That is less distracting for anyone. And uh, maybe uh, during the lesson, during the message, he, he says something about kids or maybe to contact us. Well, I'll push out whatever he's speaking about. So th this is how these slides actually work. I usually allow the North Star to be published during the message unless he's speaking about something else. Try to keep it on the North Star so that it's less distracting. Then he will come or speaker will come to a to the point where they're asking for hands. Then I will click hands. I don't have to worry about it changing on me because it's still off. So when they do hands, I push that out. 
And then uh, after the hands, usually they'll want people to either text or or send a uh, connection card, turn the connection card over. Of course, we don't have a connection card we can turn over. So we use the yes. That will be up there. But if they ask for the text or, or we want to publish the text, then we push publish the text. And so now we're going again after the giving is done, which is normally at the very end of the service. After the giving is done, I will then go back to the top Turn on automatic push again. Now the slides are counting down. This is the live one right now. It's going to go. This is the live one. This would be the live one, except I had pressed the give online. What it's about to do is the Easter now is live. So this one will be live in 56 seconds. So I wanted you to understand how these slides work. They play a big part and the experience that you and I have and the guest have as well. And I like for each of the hosts to be able to function and operate the slides themselves. And that way I don't have to do it all the time. I could be praying with someone or I could be occupied doing something or I might not even be there. And knowing how the slides operate and being comfortable with them is very, very important. Coming on over now on the tools, this do five and this number right here, this icon, this is the people icon. Right now, there are five people watching or have their computers set to North Star Church Online. Nine people have been watching total since we have begun doing this video. So this is what this is what these are. These show you the total amount of people. These show you the people that are watching at the very at this very moment. Clicking on over, and of course you know how to do this one where it shows you right now I am the only one actually logged in to chat. Coming on over, this of course is the notifications area, and this is where we receive the prayer request notification. Talk about that in one moment. I'm going to go here and talk about the host chat. In the old system, which is what we're looking at, we this is where the host can chat and it not be shown over here in the in the normal chat, the guest chat. So what we do is we can talk together here. All right, what happens when I do that is this will light up on you will you will see this light up on your browser and you can then check it and see what has been said. There's something there that you need to read and be aware about. So that's that's how the, the chat works here. It's a bit of a problem. It's not nearly the problem in the new, but uh, that's that'll be a whole different video. Let's now talk about this notification. Uh, the prayer notification. What I want to do is I'm going to go to my other browser, like the, my guest browser. This would be a guest browser, and this person is going to want prayer. So they click this live prayer. As soon as they click this live prayer, the notification will light up. It will ding, and you will hear it. And they will not hear it, but and they have no way of knowing that we've actually been notified. Here is what happens when they click it. Notice they click it. We heard that beep, that bubble sound, and now their screen goes dark gray. Now what that means is they have now entered into the live prayer chat room. Now, let me show you. What ha what has <clears throat> excuse me what has happened for the host the host now sees there is one person waiting in live prayer it is so important that we get there as quickly as we can because they're looking at this gray screen if I click right here where you would chat where the chat will actually happen everything will like disappear it will appear to the person who who's needing prayer that this is not operating correctly <laughs> and they're just kind of hung out there so it's very important that we get there as quickly as I can and as you know 
I do most of the praying for people when they want prayer. So if I don't get there quick, quickly, if I don't notice it, then you need to let me know somehow. You can put it in the chat. You can put it in the, in the host chat. But I need to know as quickly as possible. Somebody needs to get there as quickly as they can because it looks like it's not working. Now what I'm going to do and what we wish the person would do is just start typing. If they do, what I'm going to type in here is I need prayer. Now, you can't hardly see that. It's right here, but it's very, very difficult to see. So I'm going to touch enter. Now, what happens is that's gone. <laughs> and this person is still waiting for something to happen. Now, it's not actually gone. It's here. It's in there. But, uh, but I would think, well, something's not right. <laughs> so it's very, very important that the host get to them as quickly as possible. You will click on that. You will say there's a prayer request, uh, and then I accept it. Now what happens to the guest is now this now is no longer gray. It is white. They see I have joined them in this prayer room. What I will be doing and what I would have already done is in this in this prayer I would have said hi how may I pray with you I would put that there going back now looking at the guest now I have began contact with them I have begun contact with them they will now uh, let us know their prayer request. I need prayer for and whatever their prayer need may be. It may be for their health. It may be for their family. It may be for their occupation. We just enter in, let them tell us what to pray with, and then we begin to have a chat and a prayer with them. And once the prayer time is completed, hopefully they will close live prayer. And what that will do is send them back to the chat. That's what this is. This black area here is chat. Let me show you right there. That's where they will go back to automatically. I also, as the host, will close live prayer. Now we see up here, if we click here, there are currently no prayer requests. That's how the notifications work. Okay. Coming over, I will click on here, but this will be a totally different video. This, these are the new host. This is the new host tools. I like it a lot. I, uh, I want all of us to get to where we're comfortable in here with it. We're so used to the old, but that will be a totally different tutorial. I don't want to spend time here. I'm going to go back to the guest experience, the old tool area. Now, are some, those are the main things that I wanted you to see concerning the, the hosting tools. What I want to now do is concentrate a little bit on making the experience better for the guest. In the video area, in the video screen, of course, you know about the heart, flaming hallelujah heart. You know how that operates. Sometimes that is distracting to people. They need to know how they can make this go away. <laughs> and so it's easy. Click on the three dots at the, at the top, hide reactions. Click that. Their heart is gone. They can no longer press it or send it, but neither will they be distracted by anyone else who sends a heart across the screen. They'll see no more hearts. Of course, it's activated again by simply going to the top. Show reactions. The heart is back. They can now send some hallelujah hearts across the screen. I'll talk about, I'll talk about that share icon in a few minutes. Over here, pause becomes important if the person is buffering. If they are buffering, it's usually their internet, not our Sent our, our stream. It's usually their internet, and if they will press pause, that will allow their buffer to build up on their device, allow their internet to catch up a little bit, 
10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, click play again, they'll catch up and hopefully that has corrected uh, their buffering problem. Another thing they can do, if that doesn't fix it, is they can come over to the right side on the menu bar, they just hover over the video, the menu bar will open up, they come over to the settings, which is the gear icon, click it, and pick a lower quality image. If I click on the lowest one, it will pause a second, it will change the quality. Now notice how fuzzy the images are. But if that corrects their buffering problem, then that's well worth it. I like to set it on auto. It will take and it will evaluate my device and pick for me, select for me, the best quality I can do without buffering. That's why I like auto. So that will help them if they are buffering. Now, another thing that I want to talk about while I'm here, at the 9.30 and 11 o'clock especially, this chat area is flying, especially at 9.30. And so that's very distracting to people. I want to be able to tell them how they can eliminate the chat area distracting them. Again, hover over the video area, come down to the full screen icon, which is the bottom right one, click it. Now they will no longer see the chat. They will no longer be bothered by all the chat and all the action going on over there. If they have disabled the heart, they will neither see the hearts. Now I want to talk a moment here about this share icon. If I click it, what this opens up is a, is a Facebook icon, a Twitter icon, and this icon, which I'm not that familiar with. I'll click it. And what it opens up is this Tumblr. <laughs> now, I'm not familiar with Tumblr, but they can, if they are, then they can sign into their Tumblr account and do whatever you do in Tumblr. Same thing with Facebook. It opens up the login for the Facebook. Notice, though, that the video has stopped. They can now log into their Facebook account. Um, yeah, Facebook account, make a post. So that's what these do. You can get out of here by hitting es escape and escape again. Real quickly down here on the social icons, Twitter opens up as it did before, opens up the login page where a person can log in perhaps the speaker has said something that's interesting and they want to tweet it then this is a great way to do it or they can invite the whole the entire twitter community to come and go to church with them same thing with facebook they can log in to their facebook account make a post invite people now this one is interesting to me and i use it frequently it is like an, an email invite. I'm going to send myself an email so I can invite someone. I'm going to invite myself. Perhaps I do not like this particular default saying, so I want to say... I said follow the link simply because with this email will be a link. If the person clicks the link, they will come directly back to the North Star login page. Send, and that is an invitation. It's that easy. Okay, I want to show you something. I want to do an email, but I want to do it as, a, as someone who is not logged in. So I have another browser opened up that is not logged in they will come and this person has come and doesn't want to make an account and they have no login so they're going to sign in with a nickname so I'm just going to sign in with nickname now I sign in I get access to everything I get my little in down here for my nickname I can do everything except when I try to do certain things such as an email Sending an email invitation, I'm going to do one just to show you what, what the person will be going through. Again, I'm going to uh, type myself in there.
and I am going to now show you what this will do. I can change this or whatever I wanted to put, but I'm not a robot. So what, what the person coming in with a nickname has to go through is the I'm not a robot part. So I click I'm not a robot. Okay, good. Send the email. Well, I need an email. My friend's email. There it goes. They have to go through the entire I'm not a robot thing, and sometimes it will cause you to go through, pick out three signs or whatever is in here. Anyway, they have to go through the I'm not a robot situation, and I wanted to make sure you saw that. Now, we're familiar with chat, I know, but I want to show you a couple of things from the hosting standpoint on chat. I'm going to go back now to the host. Here's the host. Now you notice these three dots on the side, right side, of each of each chat. So what if you have someone come in who is using profanity or being obnoxious in some way? For example, I had someone one time who were, was pasting in these very long paste. I mean, it was filling up about half of the chat space. They were going and copying from some article or some sermon that they had found, and I guess they wanted to share it with everybody. Well, I let one or two go and, you know, and just sort of type something in just to push it on out of there. But they kept doing it over and over and over again. Well, I, I tried to say some things that, or chat some things that were, that would help the person stop and realize they're, you know, they're being, <laughs> being a little obnoxious here. Finally, what I had to do was, I had to delete the post and finally the person got the clue. No, I don't think they actually did. I think they kept doing it and I finally had to mute them. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. So say this is a something, this is a person that you've decided you've got to deal with. Well, the first thing you want to do is click here and what you can do now is you can go to a direct chat and you say, please stop doing that <laughs> or I will put you off. I will put you out. <laughs> Maybe that won't work. So what you may need to do then is delete the thing. So first thing we'll do is we'll delete. We're going to delete this, this chat. So I hit delete. It's going to ask you if you really want to. Yep. Okay. That chat is gone. All right. So the person continues as I was sharing the story a while ago. So now I, I'm faced now. I've got to kick this person out. So what I can do now is come to mute user. I'm not going to do it because it will kick me out <laughs> and it won't, it won't let me back in. So I, will, I don't want to do that right now. But if you mute that user, you'll get the same thing. You, okay, do you really want to do this? And you say, yeah. Okay, now what happens is I am not positive because I've never done it to myself. But I'm not positive if the person is, is muted where they can continue to watch or they just can't chat, or they can see it, maybe think they're putting chats in, but at any rate, we will no longer see whatever it is that they're chatting. They are muted from chat. And I'm thinking that's what happens, is that the person can continue watching, continue even watching the chat, but they're not able to chat with us any longer. Their chat is closed up. So to close this dialog box, if you ever open it up and it won't go away, just click the three dots on the other side. I want to make sure we understood that. Notes. Everybody knows how the notes work, and you can just fill in. So that's how that works, and you know that you can type in here anywhere. Uh, let's say, okay, you had some thoughts about choices, and the person can type in their thoughts about choices. Now they can, of course, go back to the very top and they can email that to themselves. Now, again, this is, this is a, another one of those robot things. If you click email for the person who is logged in, who has an account, it will automatically fill in your email address. Now, if we constantly are telling people that they can send it to whoever they want to, the, these notes, but that's not true. I cannot change this. I am clicking and dragging, and I cannot change that email address. Now, I can send the notes. Now, let's go back to the person 
who is not logged in. This is the this is the end, the uh, uh, person who signed in with a nickname. Let's go back here to notes. All right, so they want to send the email themselves the notes. They click notes. I'm not a robot. Good. All right, now it makes me go through I'm not a robot. I've got to select all the images with bridges. So now the person has to go through the I'm not a robot and looking for bridges. I want you to see what happens to a person who signs in with a nickname and some of the issues they face if they don't have if they, if they don't have an account with us. And by the way, if you want here, this is my account. If I come here and I go to settings, now I can edit my settings right here. The only thing I'll have to have is my password. Okay, so you can come here, edit your own settings, change your picture, whatever that you want to do, and then edit your settings as well. Find a campus, takes you back to the North Star website. Home takes you to the North Star website. Give, we all need to know how Give works. The page opens, we're on the North Star website. We're under on the menu of Give. Give to Panama City Campus, Give to Panama City Beach Campus, Give to Callaway Campus, and Give to the Online Campus. All of this goes to the same kitty. We each have a budget. So giving to the campus the person attends helps fulfill that budget. Click on Give to Online Campus, opens up the page. The enter in the amount they want to contribute or can give, fill in the necessary information, how they want to give, click next for the credit card information. It's very secure and then they can go to give. Back over here now again. Let's look at schedule. What I want to show you simply on schedule is say you are going to attend or the person is going to attend the 9.30 a.m. service and they wanted to invite someone. Simple. It's just like the email. Put in the person's name, their email address, change this, whatever they want to say and send it. Okay. Now if they are again, if they are logged in or if they are just in here with a nickname, they're going to have to go through, through the I'm not a robot again. If you want to be reminded, this will bring you up with a reminder. It can send you a text, however you want it done. Pretty cool. All right, Bible. Now, here are some things in Bible that I don't think I didn't even know were in here until I really got in clicking around, making videos, and, and so forth. It defaults opens to Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 in the New International Version. This is the default. But say I wanted to look at this in a different translation. Maybe I wanted to see what the King James said. Oh my goodness, look at this. Click there. All of these are different translations of the Bible. The reason the NIV is greened out here is because the NIV is what the person is on. Say again, I want to go to the King James Version. I want to see what King James says about how it records this. This changes to King James Version. I am now in the King James Version. I know that one of the, one of the uh, chapters and verses that they're going to be using in this particular sermon message is in the book of Daniel. I want to go to Daniel. I can jump over here. I can find the book of Daniel. Got to get to the prophets. There it is. There I am. There will be in chapter 9, and they're going to be reading, I think, first, verse 2. Well, I can just scroll down to verse 2. I think they're also going to go down to, well, Daniel 4. There it is. I can go right here to 4. Now I'm reading along. I can read this in different translations. I can look at my notes, go follow along with the message. I can jump over there and do chat. And goodness, I wish that every single person who joined us online knew all of this was available for them right here, Church Online. You can't do all that. You can't do all that even if you attend a, a, a facility. I want to go now back to the Bible. Here's some things I want us to see. If you go to the very top and you click plans, 
you can create your own Bible reading plan. So cool. Under Discover, if I scroll down just a little bit, it's going to give me all of these topics I can create a Bible reading plan about. So let's say anxiety. I, and I just scroll down. I just want you to see how many there are. It's going to populate that in just a second. Let's go anxiety. I click anxiety. Anxiety opens. Here are some discussions about anxiety. Okay, I want to start. I want to start this plan. I want to read about anxiety. I want to see what the scriptures say. So what do I want to read it by myself? Do I want to read it with my friends? And so I get to select all of these things. And here are some, some things about anxiety that I can read about in the scriptures. I can have a Bible reading plan about anxiety. How cool is that? Now here's something that's just neat. Click videos. We have all of these videos in here. It's amazing. New Testament, Gospel of Luke, Life of Jesus, Old Testament, all four of the Gospels, Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Matthew, <laughs> Gospel of St. John. Amazing what's in here. Let's, uh, let's take a look at one of these. Let me go back up here and just show you that there's an Easter one. If I click it, it shows me one right here about the crucifixion. If I click it, it opens up the video. It's loading it. It opens up the video on this. This is so cool. Shows me a video about the crucifixion. Is that not cool? Now I want to show you something else. Videos. Going back down, let's go down to the book of Luke. Click it. Shows me the chapter and the verse that this is about. Verses 1 through 25. It's going to read it to me. <laughs> so let's go to chapter 2. That's about Jesus. Let's go to 2. Click it. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a censor should it's be taken reading the it to the entire me. Roman world. It's reading the this Bible to me. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius Is that was not awesome? Syria. Okay. That's enough. I, I, it just, I was just thrilled just knowing that was available in there. I've got to take some time and just kind of go through some of those myself. Let's jump over to Connection Card. Connection Card, as you know now, opens up in one line. And the person has to scroll all the way through there. All the way at the bottom is the prayer request. That's okay. I wished it were open larger, but that's what we've got. So I want to show you just a faster way. You can click here, type in your name. Now, instead of scrolling here, what I'm going to do is just press tab. It takes me to the next line, 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 right on down. It takes me to everything but the connection card and prayer request. <laughs> I've still got to scroll down, but at least that's a little easier than trying to scroll down, get that centered up so I can get in there. <laughs> and then of course, submit, done, and, it, and once done, it will take them back to the chat or leave them there. They can go back to get to chat themselves. Okay. I've done the connection card, the Bible, the schedule, the notes. Okay, I think I have covered everything that I wanted to cover for you in here. I am going to make a, another video on the switch to the new user uh, tools uh, very, very soon. Hope to have that for you soon. All right, I want to thank you all for all you do for me, for North Star, for the kingdom of God and how you minister to people. God bless you. And I will see you online soon.